All right, everyone, Nancy Pelosi has said that Trump plans to actually sign uh, the DREAM Act when it goes through the legislature, and probably will. Now, there are so many different levels to discuss here because Trump is playing, he's gone beyond 40 chess with this one. He's got everyone confused. So I'm going to try to boil it down so people can understand at least my opinion, my, my gut feeling about what Trump is doing here. Trump is not an immigration hardliner as some of his fans projected him to be. That is, there's not going to be a mass deportation of every illegal in the United States. The Democrats are worried about this too. Uh, or I should say not worried so much as they wanted to grandstand on the issue because, of course, to them, eh, immigrants are just a group to be catered to during elections and then abandoned thereafter. Trump, though, is really, really smart. Between his economic nationalism and continued pushing for the wall, but his softer approach on DACA, he can actually get something done. He can negotiate with people. He likes things to be a little bit in flux and chaos because it makes it much, much easier to do what he thinks he needs to do for the country. That's what Trump's been doing. It's what Trump's going to continue doing. If he gets a second term, he's going to keep doing it through his second term, too. Here's my reading of the situation. Trump is softballing the Democrats as well as the left right now because he realizes he needs to ease up on the stress that he's put them under in order to get them to work with him. He's given them Stockholm syndrome to the point at which they've got Trump derangement syndrome very badly. Uh, their derangement is beginning to wane. Now he releases that pressure valve, socially speaking, on this group of people, the far left. And suddenly most of their concerns will disappear. You watch. His approval will shoot right up uh, in due time. But there's a big but here. And this goes out to Trump's core fans, the same people who say that I'm soft on immigration or something. It's not going to be the same dream act that Obama legislated from the executive branch with an executive order. It's not going to be the same Dream Act. The Republicans in Congress will end up inserting some language there to bring greater limitations on the situation. It might even include, this might be Trump's ultimate goal. He might get it inserted that passing it requires funding the wall. If he does that, by the way, he wins two victories at the same time and probably wins a third in 2020. That might be his goal. He might have completely outmaneuvered Pelosi, Schumer, and everybody else in the Democratic Party while forcing the Never Trumpers to actually get on board. See, here's the thing. DACA was an executive order. It was not a legislative thing. It wasn't a bill. It wasn't a law. It wasn't something ironclad that an executive can't just come along and throw aside with the stroke of their pen. That doesn't work. That's not called reform. People who like DACA need to understand that you can't do that from the executive branch. You have no choice but to negotiate with the legislature at the time. You can think it's immoral to stand against DACA, but it will never stand anyway. Trump could get rid of it and say, oh, well, it's gone, and I'll veto any attempt to reinstitute it because screw you. But Trump's a little bit different than Obama. Obama never wanted to work with the legislature. For years and years, all he did was buy executive order because he wanted 100% of what he wanted at any given time. That's not the way Trump operates. You think he's a hardliner. Have you read Art of the Deal? You make a big a, a big sell. You come up to someone and say, hey, you, know, you want to buy my car. I want a million bucks for my car. They're like, what are you talking about? It's worth like 10 bucks or something. But you're going to get more than that 10 bucks. The original ask is just a deflection. It's just, a, they get so uh, so hot under the collar, they get so steamed, it screws with their minds. It's a way of manipulating people. This happens every time people haggle, if they're any good at it. A big ask, up front. Yeah, I want $50 for this object that's worth 20 bucks. You're not going to get the $50. It's not what you're hoping for. You're hoping to get a little bit more than what you actually want for it. Or at, least, or at least that much, because if you just ask what it's worth, you're going to get less than that. Trump understands how the fuck do you think he's conducted business all these years. He comes out on the campaign trail. He says, we're going to deport a bunch of people. I'm going to go hard on China. I'm going to screw with them. I'm going to rip up every trade deal. I'm going to, I'm going to be the big bully in the room, and you're going to fucking know it because I'm Donald Trump. That's the way that I am. By the way, we're going to do this, tax reform, we're, we're going to you know, massively increase military spending, I'm going to muzzle the media, and, and all of these things. But it's all part of that strategy. He loads his cabinet down with people who are 
uh, you know, more, more out there than traditional cabinets have been over the last few cycles. He did this in order to manipulate the legislature as well as his enemies among the regular American people. Right now, he's got the Democratic lay people chasing ghosts. They still think that he's a Russian espionage agent or that he's a fascist. He's clearly not. And when it becomes evident that he's not because he begins backing, this was always his goal. When he begins soft, softening his approach just a little bit, he gets most of what he wants, or I should say basically everything that he actually wanted. He can even go a little bit further on some tokens potentially, get some unexpected bonuses for his actual platform. Hey, he's won. You don't even see it yet. During the election, people told me Trump was unelectable because of the uh, the Billy Bush tape or because of his comments about Warren, you know, and her native ancestry, so-called, or a million other things. They told me, yeah, he can't win. He's made himself unelectable. I mean, look at him. He, he, he says hell. He says damn it. He, he bragged about his uh, manhood size on a national debate stage, and then he skipped a debate. He didn't even show up because, oh, they wouldn't have these other candidates in there, and I want them to be at the debate, so I'm just going to skip it because it's not worth my time, and I don't want to give them the ratings. He goes after the media like a cutthroat. says, oh, these people lie about anything. You know, the first time that he says something kind of nice about one of these firms, they're going to be like, oh, thank God, please, please, Mr. Trump, please let us give you a softball interview. Let us handle you with kid gloves, please. We're so tired of being scooped by the uh, alternative media. And he'll have them at his beck and call. That's the whole thing. It's no different on DACA. He sent it to the legislature, which is legally proper, so that something can be done that's long-term. Because then if a bill is passed and he simply signs or vetoes it, and he apparently would sign it, if that happens, it's stable because it no longer can an executive just, just declare unilaterally, yeah, I'm getting rid of this program. He doesn't want to do that. I don't think he wants to be an imperial president because he realizes somebody else might come along years later and just undo everything he did. That's what he's doing to Obama right now. Because Obama was unwilling to work with the legislature, relatively few substantial bills were passed during his presidency other than Obamacare, which is really, uh, still, Trump is correct when he says this, it's a disaster. Even the Democrats are like, oh yeah, we need to reform it significantly, scrap it, get rid of it, single payer or, uh, or something. We need to patch it, throw more money at it, which won't work. Even they admit it. The fact that people like the Affordable Care Act right now is because they were so, uh, so screwed over by the idea of Paul Ryan handling it. And Paul Ryan shouldn't even be in office. I don't know why the people there uh, tolerate him at all. They shouldn't give him the time of day. But now the legislature will pass the DREAM Act. It'll be legislation. That way it gets to Trump's desk and he can just sign it. And then he can't, by the way, uh, when it comes to his desk. If it becomes unpopular with his core fans, it doesn't matter because he's going to gain millions of new centrists uh, and apolitical people who will support him. So he trades off one group for the other. He can't lose. It's a no-lose situation that he has constructed here. People don't even have the foresight to see it. There are people saying, oh, Trump working with the Democrats kind of on DACA or on the debt ceiling will come back to haunt him. No, it won't. Nope, it's gonna come back to haunt the Democrats. It's gonna come back to haunt the far left in specific, and I'll tell you why. It makes it look, to their zealot fans, it makes it look like they're working with an evil fascist dictator because that's how they see Trump. They're never gonna get aboard, by the way, with his proposals. He's going after the business Democrats and people in the, in the, in the right and left center. That's who he's going after right now. If he can get them all on board, he wins in 2020. The Republicans wipe out what's left of Democratic resistance in, uh, in the midterms. And then he has carte blanche for at least uh, six years in total. He can do whatever he wants. All of us, it'll, it'll be the story of the ultimate comeback. And I think this attracts Trump too. I, I think he has no problem with his approval where it is now. I disagree with people when they say that he cares. He wants to be the comeback kid. He, see, here's the thing. He's willing to screw himself a bit temporarily to gain more in the long term because he knows that when he shoots up there, it's going to be all that much more impressive because he'll have a year of nonstop stories circulating about how he couldn't possibly succeed, he was doomed, everyone hated him. And then all of a sudden, everybody will be on board with his agenda. He'll be seen as a very good president. He will. You watch. You wait and see what happens. See if I'm not right. And that's what I think happens anyway. And if he fails, what then? Okay, he becomes a one-term president. He still, by the way, managed to get some of his agenda passed already. 
He tore apart the TPP, it's gone. NAFTA's being renegotiated. Sometime they'll hammer something out. It doesn't matter whether it's half-assed. You can't make it worse. It's going to be an improvement anyway. He's made a swing away from uh, Middle East war pandering uh, and focusing on Asia and also, to an extent, the Americas, which is good. I, I think he needs to, to muzzle people like Pence that want to go more warmonger mode. He needs to resist that. As long as he doesn't start any major conflicts, though, minus North Korea, perhaps, I suppose. Uh, on that token, nobody will be calling him a, a war hawk. So there's nothing wrong with that. Trump's fooling everybody. He's even fooling most of his own fans. They, they, there are people in this country who thought he was actually going to deport every illegal uh, immigrant in the country. Oh, yeah, I'm going to deport this two-year-old for coming here. Illegal. He's not going to do that. No. He's going to let the legislature handle it, knowing full well that the Democrats and the Never Trumpers will largely craft it. They'll give a couple of handouts to the far right on the issue, um, some minor deportations, more restrictions, or funding the wall. I'm sure that's what Trump prefers. He would love it. We've already seen that he bundles the debt deal together uh, uh, with other things. Why wouldn't he do the same on DACA? He'll go, he'll go before. He's not talking to McConnell, so fuck him. He'll go to Rand and Amash or some people like that, and he'll say, hey, I want you to institute wall funding in exchange for DACA. That's the grand bargain all along. And if he doesn't get that, he gets something else that he wants. And he hammers away at things this way. If you have a big ask to begin with, then you can only get half of it or a quarter of it, and you still get quite a lot. That's what he wants. He doesn't have... Here's the thing. People don't get... They still don't get it. Trump is a business Democrat. That means that he's lock in step with a lot of the establishment of D.C. But on the major issues, he does literally disagree with them on. Thinks we need a wall. Thinks that we do need uh, economic uh, nationalism of a variant. On those issues, he won't budge, and he will get them. But he'll make uh, he'll make the establishment feel loved and safe, and he'll manipulate them, really, by giving them things that he has no problem with to begin with because he agrees with them on those issues. They'll think that they're getting quite a lot out of Orange Hitler. Meanwhile, they're getting jack shit. He was going to do that anyway. But they're the ones that have to come to him because he made the big ask. You watch what happens with DACA. <laughs> Watch if he doesn't screw these people. Stab him in the back. Oh, it'd be funny. And then all those people that said, oh, well, Trump is unpopular. He's uh, just watch. Uh, wait another year. Maybe a year and a half or so. See, again, see if I'm not right. See if the midterms come around and the Democrats get their blue wave. I don't think that's going to happen. Trump is churning full speed ahead with his, uh, his pivot right now. And he's doing a good job with it. And I know what he's doing because, you know, I, this is what I expected him to do all along. He was never a hardliner. The idea that someone can go from being a very gentle, generally business Democrat, maybe a little bit more laissez-faire than even the 90s business Democrats, not really into the social wedge issue sort of bullshit, and, and very conciliatory, generally, to people uh, of various classes, actually ca seems to care even about the lower classes of fucking New York City, which nobody else did at the time if they were like Donald Trump. The idea that someone like that can become a total out there, like, further right than Ted Nugent character. Do you think that's a strategy, or do you actually think that somebody who has made that much money and continues to is actually nuts? I don't think he's nuts at all. I think he knows perfectly well what he's doing. He's doing the same thing with North Korea. He's putting so much pressure on that regime, he's hoping that it'll crack. And if they don't, yeah, he probably will end up bombing them. But if they do, hey, he just won on the Korean Peninsula too. Other politicians around the world, they don't seem to, to I don't even think they comprehend it. It's like he's, he's written about this. He's told people his strategy for years now. They still don't understand. They just don't, I don't understand how they can't. He's written about this in his book already. He's already told people what his strategy would be as the U.S. president. They still don't get it. Now, he's not going soft on you on immigration, but his, his intent was never to kick a bunch of uh, people who came here as kids out of the country. He wants his wall. He'll probably get it funded by trading it off against DACA. By the way, uh, which would you rather have? Because you're going to have one or the other. Would you rather deport a bunch of people and they come back in because we don't have a border wall? Or would you rather build the wall and say, oh, well, we're not dealing with the situation right now. You've got conditional residency as long as you don't commit any crimes. Which one is more important? You have to make that decision. 
So you either side with Trump, as I do on the issue, and you say, well, it's nice to stop the problem for future generations. As far as the problem now, we can brush it aside with, with residency. Or you can say, oh, no, we want everything that we want all the time. That's what Obama did. That's why he failed. So you're not understanding strategy. You're not getting it. You're, you're locked in your mind thinking that your views are objective and that they should be taken as objective by everyone else. Okay, so be it. You think you're noble. That's not the way that other people's minds work. It's not the way that negotiating works. Trump's done this his whole life. He's going to continue to outmaneuver every one of his enemies in D.C. The Mueller investigation will never get him impeached. He will never get thrown out of office for that fake-as-fuck investigation. It's just a deflection. They're wasting time. They've already discovered that he has no ties to Russia. That's why they're talking about Manafort or his son so much. They're hoping to nail one of them to the wall to make him look bad. They'll probably fail at that, too. Meanwhile, he uh, pardons Joe Arpaio. And uh, have you heard much about that over the last few days? They acted like it was the worst outrage ever. Now nobody cares. They're too busy fixating on DACA. They're confused at what Trump is doing. I still stand against him on the topic of debt, though. I think that, I, that could uh, bite him in the ass in the future. Not because he worked with the Democrats, but because the debt will keep growing. But it's going to be kind of hard for the Democrats to make it a political issue since Obama did the same fucking thing for eight years. Since Bush did the same thing. Since Clinton, uh, in his last years, I believe, uh, did the same thing. We were running a surplus for a while. Surplus in the sense of the debt was decreasing, not that we didn't have debt. Um, deficit was erased. There's a difference between the two. People need to realize that as well. Trump's going to continue to do his negotiator-in-chief thing. And he's going to get a lot of what he wants. And D.C. will feel calm, because they'll think they're getting most of what they want. They'll be like, oh, we're only giving Trump a couple little things here. Okay, we gave him more wall funding. We gave him a, a small number of deportations. We gave him one altered trade deal. What's the big deal? Those are the platforms that he ran on. That's, that's the point. You think you're getting what you want. He's giving you stuff he doesn't have a problem with giving you in the first place because he came forward to you and said, I'm going to have everything. Like Obama. You thought he was going to be like Obama and unwilling to work with others. Now that he's working with you, you're begging him. You're sitting there like groveling, uh, uh, <laughs> confused little children uh, that don't understand the world. Oh man, it's so funny to watch this. It's hilarious. Even a lot of Trump fans, again, just like they were demoralized during the election. They said, yeah, I voted for Trump. I want Trump to win, but I don't think he can win. And I'm sitting there laughing my ass off. I'm doing the same thing now that some of Trump's fans saying, oh, well, I don't know if he can make it. He might get impeached. His approval's so low. He hasn't gotten his wall yet. Yeah, give it time. Christ, he hasn't even been in there for a year. It takes a little bit longer to work with DC. He's kicked it into hyperdrive. He's gotten more accomplished in his first year already. I hate to say it, than Obama did in eight. Because for the first two years that he had a mandate, he didn't do anything. Then he dragged his heels and legislated through executive action, which, by the way, is dubiously constitutional to begin with. Trump's, Trump knows better. Meanwhile, he's got his cabinet working on things too. And he can cut any one of them at any time. DeVos or DeVos or however you pronounce it, who cares? You can just uh, slide her to the side and right off a cliff if he wants to. Hey, I gave you something, now give me something. I want this element of tax reform. Whoops, I got rid of another cabinet member and replaced him with, with someone I'm not going to listen to who's a total neocon. He's not going to listen to those people on any issue that he feels he has a difference with them on. You just watch. Yeah, Trump is, a, is good at strategy. But a lot of people have, like, given up on the issue. They think, oh, he's not negotiating. He has no strategy. He's just being bombarded constantly. Of course he is. And he doesn't care. He knows that he's got a hardened core of support that's going to keep him afloat in the upper 30s, low 40s anyway. He's not at risk of being impeached at that level. He's just biding his time. He's waiting for the fish to bite. And you watch, uh, they're already biting. He's got people like Pelosi. You can realize what Pelosi and Schumer and people like that said about him during the election? How much they viscerally hated him? Now they're sitting down shaking his hand. Yeah, he'll sign DACA. Yeah, we got the debt deal. Oh, he feels... He, he's fooling you people. And he's also probably going to destroy the neoliberal movement in the process. The far left will gain support because it'll... Uh, they'll say, well, Trump is Hitler. And look, we were right. The neoliberals are working with him. So much for the next neoliberal big money candidate gaining any traction. He knows that the progressives are still going to be out. The neoliberals control. Here's the other part. You watch if this isn't right too. Have you thought of this? I might be the only person who said it. Uh, although I don't, you know, quote me on that. Because Scott Adams might have covered it. I don't uh, go to his blog much anymore, but he might have mentioned this. 
uh, in all honesty. Uh, or, or Molyneux, possibly. He was uh, early on with understanding what Trump is doing. Trump right now is setting up the neoliberals for disaster. Because as they go into the next election, because elections basically last, you know, four years now. The progressives will gain steam, but they will be denied their candidate again. That's probably what ends up happening. Because Tom Perez is in control of the DNC. And he knows full well it's not a one-off that Hillary Clinton demanded the DNC be corrupt for. This happens every single time. The Democrats have been doing this for many, many uh, decades. So that means a neoliberal will be the candidate. There are going to be twice as many progressives that refuse to vote for that neoliberal candidate because he's working with them. He's working with them. And the, the far left sees him as Hitler. So they're going to say, we were right. Aha, Bernie was right. Elizabeth Warren's kind of right. And they're not going to get their candidate, which means that they have to choose between voting for a neoliberal who shook hands with Hitler or uh, standing on principle and not doing that, staying home, voting third party, writing in Bernie over and over again for the rest of their natural born life. Which do you think they're going to do? They're young and idealistic. A lot of them fled Hillary Clinton in the last election. Can you imagine if they get some vapid neoliberal there standing uh, shoulder to shoulder, grinning ear to ear with Trump? What do you think is going to happen to their voting share? They won't be winning the popular vote in 2020 if uh, what I think will come true comes true. Just watch. Just observe. It's strategy. That's about all. Peace out.